Hi and welcome back and hello if you're new. Um, so, where were we? Part four, recovery update. So yes, you'll probably have seen this outfit in my last video with a similar background because I'm filming two films, two videos back to back. Um, recovery. What can I say? It's been a journey. It's been a lot to get used to. Um, a lot of change. But I'm now kind of on the better side of it. So when I first came out of hospital, um, we have a small step at the front of the house. I couldn't even get lift my leg to get up the steps. Um, my dad and the Griffin had to help me. I couldn't walk very far at all without crutches or a Zimmer frame. So in the house between the chair that I was sitting in and my, the downstairs toilet, or the downstairs bed where I was sleeping, so on the sofa basically, you're probably looking at a few metres, a couple of metres, three metres tops. And I couldn't do it without crutches. I was struggling. Um, the griffin was doing all my food for me. I couldn't eat very much. My hands were very weak, so I was holding a knife and fork. I couldn't cut food. Um, my voice was nowhere near as, it, as good as it is now. So again, apologies, my clip on mic isn't working, so I've only got the external. So I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, I couldn't hold a pen to write my name. I couldn't text on my phone. I couldn't use the stylus pen on my tablet. Um, so everything was very... I needed a carer. It took me... A month maybe six weeks just to be able to get up for four or five stairs um, and it took me probably a month and two months to get fully up the stairs um, to be able to shower I was washing using the kitchen sink to wash and wash my hair um, I buzz cut the hair, as you probably saw, if you've seen my first video or my second video or my any of my Instagram, you know, you'll have seen that I buzz cut my hair. That just made life easier for me. I couldn't hold my arms up. So when you when it came to showering, I had a shower stall that was loaned to me by a, a kind of facilities company from the hospital. But I couldn't be left on my own. So... The griffin had to be in the bedroom while I was in the shower. There were times he had to help wash me because I just I was just so tired all the time. My muscles were weak and shaky. And gradually things got better. Um, but it was very, very slow. When I went back to work, I'd been out of the house a few times. I could drive again, but I couldn't drive very far. So that was kind of for Halloween, so the end of October. I'd driven. Um, I'd driven into our local town. I think I'd, the furthest I'd driven was about 40 miles. But having somebody with me. I couldn't leave the house without my crutches. I couldn't walk to the car. So we have, um, our house faces the main road. And we have to walk down the side of the house and down the side of the garden to get to our driveway. I couldn't walk that distance with crutches, with help. So we ended up purchasing a, we borrowed a wheelchair the first time I went into town from a mobility shop up the road, which is lucky. They are literally just up the road from me. Um, but we decided hiring a wheelchair every time we wanted to go out was awkward. We only had it for so many hours in the day. We had to have it back, you know, so if we wanted to go, go out anywhere, it was a bit of a pain. So I purchased one. And it was a manual one, which meant the Griffin had to push me around in it. And it wasn't easy at all. Um, so eventually I decided to sell my car. 
I've got a van that I use and from the proceeds of selling my car I purchased an electric wheelchair which has been it's given me freedom so this means I can go into town so for example on Wednesday of last week or by the time this video goes up the week before I had to get my van tested and MOT'd and serviced and so we put the wheelchair in the car in the van I drove to the garage the guy at the garage has known me for years so he got my chair out for me and off I went into town to meet somebody for for um, coffee we had to move around town and then I went back and picked my picked my van up so it gives me that bit of independence it means I can do things without the griffin having to push me around it's helped him because he was getting so tired having to look after me um, so my chair is a an absolute godsend um, I have crutches I have NHS crutches that are mine from when I hurt my hip a long time ago um, I purchased some off eBay they're, they're pretty good um, they sent me home with a Zimmer frame but I couldn't use it I didn't like it and in the end I bought my own crutches which are foldable ones with that absolutely great and I may go down to a walking stick at some point but at the moment my crutches are are brilliant um and yes on the physical side I'm a lot better when I'm at home I don't use any mobility aids I'm now fully able to climb the stairs um, without them I can walk down the stairs without them I can cook a meal I can stand up for about 10 to 15 minutes before I get very tired and I need to sit down or my my legs shake because the muscle is still weak um but what I'm determined to do is for example I the week before last I was busy Tuesday all day around the house Wednesday I was out in town with a friend and then busy in the afternoon on the Thursday I went back to work on the on for a good Friday um we went to the cinema on the Saturday we went out shopping and then into town and then here I am filming so I've kept my body moving what I haven't done until today when I needed to because our local Tesco's I can't walk walk around it it's too big and because we're going into town as well today I took the chair but I made sure that I walked to the car I walked back from the car oh, excuse me I've gone to a little shop on my way home after dropping the, the griffin off at a gig. Use my use my crutches. Sorry about that. I was getting a bow of hiccups. Um, yeah, so I've I've made sure I've kept my body active, even when I'm achy and tired. I keep my muscles going because the more I do, it's a bit like the gym effect. The more you go to the gym the tired you are the next day but if you go again it doesn't hurt so much that's what I'm aiming for that continuous using my muscles to make sure they keep the strength today I've had to use my chair um tomorrow we're going to the cinema again I'm gonna walk so I'll park close to the door I'll walk into the cinema I'll walk out um so the physical side of it has been better in the last three to four weeks than it has been ever the kind of progress is very up and down I've been on a big big up curve I am expecting a little bit of a setback after my kidney surgery um, maybe I might have to use my crutch a bit more I may have to use it directly after surgery for at least a week um, just to make sure I stand upright and I don't knock myself because I'm more I'm more aware when I've got my crutch of space um, I don't walk into door frames um, I won't be going up and down the stairs so that will set me back a little bit but I'm prepared for that but I will get that back because I find every time I've gone into hospital again so when I went back in November December I came back out a little bit stronger when I went in January February I came out even stronger again so I'm hoping that yes the surgery will knock me on the physical recovery because I won't be able to do stairs for a few week, couple of weeks but in general I should be back to normal within the month 
when I say normal, where I am now. That's the aim. So other recovery, food. Food has been a nightmare. I probably touched upon it in my first video that when I came out of hospital the first time round, I couldn't eat a lot of things. My taste buds had basically died off. I'd been 57 days, no food. Um, and after 30 days, your taste buds just stop working. Um, they tend to die off a little bit. So food wasn't nice. Um, my biggest, biggest problem was water. So I used to drink an awful lot of sparkling water even before I went into hospital. And when I came out, it tasted like battery acid, so I couldn't drink it. In the last two or three weeks, I can drink it again and I'm drinking it like there's no tomorrow because I prefer that to normal water. I do not like the taste of normal water. Plus, it now reminds me of being in hospital and it reminds me of being sick, which I don't want. And I get to the point where I don't know if anyone else who prefers sparkling over plain and normal water. But I find if I drink a pint of normal water, I find it very heavy in my stomach. Whereas if I drink a pint of sparkling water, it's not. So I don't have that heaviness in my stomach when I drink it. So that helps. But food wise, I'm certainly getting back to where I was. Um, there's not much now I can't have. There's certain things I won't eat because they've made me sick previously. Or I've had an issue with the taste so I can't touch it. One of the big things, they gave me fish and chips in the hospital. No. Fish, I'm not, unless it's from a chip shop, like the ones you cook at home, I'm not up for um, at the moment because that's what they gave me in hospital and I, they made me ill. And the chips they, they served had been reheated, pre-cooked frozen chips. So they weren't very nice at all and they were a bit soggy. Um, whether that was because they put metal covers and it had got condensation on the cover and it had got wet inside. I don't know. But they were soggy and I couldn't eat them. In the last couple of weeks, I've actually said to the Griffin, do you know what? I fancy some chips. So we found low fat oven chips, which is amazing. So I can have chips at home when I want them rather than having the same potatoes all the time. Um, I've had cereals that have made me sick that I now can't face eating again. Oranges I couldn't eat. Um, I found them too acidic. Now don't have a problem with them. A lot of my food has gone back to normal. So the only thing I'm having to deal with currently is cravings. Now, because my body is still going through a massive healing process, my body is crying out for certain things and we don't know why. At the moment, it's licorice. And I can't get enough black licorice. If I want something, it's like licorice. That's all I want. Um, so that's that's been a craving for a couple of weeks. Um, I can now drink Pepsi Max again, which is amazing. Because I'd gone off all fizzy soda whatsoever. Couldn't have it. I tried all different types and flavours. Nothing was working. So the fact that I can now drink one of my favourite sodas and it doesn't have sugar in it is great. Um... But I'm still preferring my sparkling water, if I'm honest. If I've got the choice of the two, I'll take the water. Um, snacks and things I'm now eating again. I'm finding I'm more hungry than I have than I was, which is good, which means I'm back to a normal, healthy person of eating-wise. So three meals a day, three or four snacks a day. Um, and yeah, that's that's all going really well. So that's that's great that I can now make food for myself and go oh boiled eggs I want, I want boiled eggs and toast that'd be great and I'll have it and I and I can eat it so that's been really helpful that, that my food isn't so limited anymore um still having to deal with taking these things whenever I eat and that still takes the fun out of an enjoyment out of eating but that's me now that's my life so I just have to do it what else? My voice. My voice has gotten better, you may have noticed. It's still a bit raspy. I still can't sing. I still can't shout. Um, 
but it lasts for longer it doesn't bottom out on me so I was finding certainly after the last video I was finding my voice wasn't not the last video I did but the previous ones when I had pink hair those videos my voice the next day was really bad really quiet now I'm finding I can go three or four days before I get a period where my voice just disappears um, I'm coping with my meds that's all fine my meds have been reduced which is amazing I'm no longer on blood pressure tablets although I may need to go back on one which one's fine three is not um, my insulin my nighttime insulin has been reduced so the cyst that I had has gone we believe um, and it's taken the pressure off my pancreas which means whatever small amounts of insulin I'm producing is getting through which means my nighttime ones my nighttime dose could be reduced because I was going hypo in the morning which is not good um, what else brain function is coming back um, the only problem I have with at the moment is short-term memory so for example I said to the griffin the other night oh can we get chip shop chips tomorrow night because we've got a chippy near us I don't know what it's like where you are um, but I find when you go to a chip shop they're really greasy and you can see the grease on the paper we've got a chippy near us where no word of a lie we've had chips from there twice now over the course of about three or four weeks and there's been no grease at all in the paper and they're more <coughs> they don't feel like fried they're big wedgie chips they're really nice so I've had a few of those we've gone out for food and I've been fine and it's just kind of got that normality back in life um so yeah that's that's been good but there you go my brain's gone again so yeah I was saying to him can we go to the chippy and he went yeah we'll go tomorrow night that'll be fine I'm like yeah that'd be good um and I know what it was I was cravings chicken and mushroom pie that's what I wanted I just wanted a chicken and mushroom pie and I know they do really nice ones <coughs> excuse me so I literally said that to him and about 10 minutes later said before I go out in the morning do you want me to put a joint a chicken or something in the slow cooker for tea in the evening and he went why we're we going to the chippy like I remembered I don't remember excuse me I haven't got my cup with me today so yeah my short-term memory isn't wonderful it's almost as if if the information is not important I won't remember it if it's not <coughs> sorry I don't know what's with me um yeah if it's not something that I have to remember I don't so that's been a bit odd um what else shaking I still shake but I think that's my muscles working again and getting used to working where I'm trying to walk more um, so when I've been at work the last few days that I've been in work with meetings and things um, before I went back full time I was shaky but I think that's part adrenaline part muscle but in general she's she's still um, weight my weight so I've now lost 10 stone about 141 pounds for those in the states because your stone and our stone is different um, 64 kilos for those in metric is what I've now lost in weight and I'm still going I put a little bit back on as I explained in my last video but I'm or was it this one I can't remember in one of them I've, I've put a bit of weight back on but that's a good sign that means that my meds are working and my body is starting to recover to its normal state so I'm still being careful what I eat some days I have really bad days and I am more down the junk food because all I want is just a little snack other days it's all I want is fruit it just depends what my body tells me it needs um, but I'm doing really well with that I have an aim in my recovery that I would like to go swimming which I mentioned I think in my first video or second video 
I said I wanted to go swimming again. I think I'm aiming towards, it depends how my, my surgery goes and how much I depend on my crutches again. Um, but if the recovery from the surgery is as quick as I hope, by my celebration day of the 2nd of June, which is the day I woke up that I remember, I want to go swimming or have been swimming um, because I think now I could drive there, walk in, change, get to the pool, even if it's only a couple of lengths and then get out again and get changed. I want to do it because I think it will do me the world of good to start that feeling normal again. Um, I've done various things with my hair. I shaved it off. It's grown back. Um, I've I am growing it, but I've kind of done a mullety, shaggy thing going on with it at the moment because um, it's growing out awkwardly. Done it myself. I need to sort this bit out because it's too thick, but we'll do that later. It doesn't look so bad when it's black, but it does when it's not. I've dyed it black again because I needed to feel like me. Um, I can see again properly. So one of the things I noticed coming out of the coma was my vision was very blurred. Even with my glasses on, I was finding it hard to focus. So on my phone to send a text message, I couldn't see the lettering. Occasionally, if I'm very tired now, or if my bloods are starting to drop a bit, I will notice I can't read something on the TV. So if you, anyone who's got Sky, you know how they do like a blurb of what the programme's about when you go into it, if you've recorded it. Some days I can't read that properly. Um, but in general, recovery is going really well. There's been tears. There's been screams. There's been frustration. Um, there's been tantrums. Just because I get so frustrated, I can't do things. The Griffin's been marvellous. Um, he's been absolutely amazing with everything. And there's times that I've been, no, I want to do it, but he'll still go and get it. So if I say oh, I would need a drink or I need to get a new bottle of water, he'll go and get it for me so as I'm not carrying heavy bottles around. But there's times when I want to do it myself because I want to push myself. And then I get the don't overdo it from everybody and don't, you know, don't do too much. I'm fine. I'm, I know when my body's had enough. I had the aim today of filming, of doing two film, two videos changing my top and doing another two and I'm not going to because I've had a busy few days I am a little bit tired um, I'm okay but I could do we're going to bed early and I won't because the griffin's out but I will sit here and I'll watch tv till he gets back and then I'll I'll go to bed and then tomorrow morning we don't have to get up early I just <clears throat> I just have to get up and do my meds and then I can go back to sleep so I'm going to have a chill day tomorrow. We are going to the cinema. Um, because it's coming up. To, it is the anniversary weekends at the moment. And I don't want to let it get to me. I, I see a lot online about, you know, people who are coming up to their anniversaries and they're getting depressed and they're getting, they're crying. And, they're, and, I, and I get it. Genuinely, I totally understand but I don't want to let the negative get to me. I want to do the positive. I want to keep moving. I want to go out walking. I want to do things for myself. I want to be active. And I want to be keeping my brain away from anything to do with what happened to me. And again, I know that sounds silly because I'm doing these videos. But it's not talking about that first time. I'm not reliving that first time. Um... But yeah, recovery is going well. I've gone back to work. Sorry if my brain is jumping all over. I've gone back to work. That's That started last Thursday. Um, by the time you see this video, I might even have gone to a customer site. Um, so yeah, things are really good. I can go out on my own. I can go to my doctor's appointments on my own. I can, if it's the hospital, I need my chair, so I need someone with me. I'm not quite able to get my chair in and out of the van yet. But soon... I reckon within the next couple of weeks, I'll be getting my chair in and out on my own. And then the sky's the limit. Once I'm on the road, I can take my chair if I need it. I've got my crutches if I need them. 
I've got my medical bag. Nothing's going to stop me. Um, what else can I talk about recovery wise? Uh, my hair's grown back thicker. That's weird. My my lighting is gone. Bear with me. Bear with one moment. So forgive the horrible lighting coming from over here, but my light just went for some reason. Um, and I'm downstairs, so I haven't got my ring light or anything on me. Yeah, recovery recovery is going well. I'm looking after myself. I'm getting stronger day by day. And I feel good. I feel like about six weeks ago, if you follow me on Instagram, or maybe maybe four weeks ago, I can't remember. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen a post of my old modelling pictures and me talking about how I was so confident, despite my size and despite being bigger, I was confident. And then being in a hospital, I've lost it all. And I think what happened was because I was living downstairs, because I couldn't get up the stairs, I wasn't seeing myself in a mirror all the time. And I only really took selfies to document my hair or, you know, try and post something that I was feeling OK. But now I live, live downstairs and sleep upstairs again. When I get up and I get dressed, I'm looking at in, in a mirror and I'm getting used to looking at this new slimmer body. And in the last two to three weeks, my confidence has skyrocketed. I don't know whether it's the haircut the hair colour, the accepting this same shape but smaller body, um, being able to go out and go anywhere and pick up a piece of clothing and know it will fit me. It's a weird concept, but something in my brain has clicked and I feel fantastic. From where I was, I feel amazing. Um, and I don't want to go back there ever. I have a new lease on life. I have a new outlook on life. And all I can say is that I will keep my recovery at a steady pace. I'll do what I can when I can. And at the moment, I'm good. I'm really good. I'm probably better now than I was before I got sick, to be honest. Um, my voice isn't. My voice may never be fully. But even my scar has... You can, you can see it here, but it's reduced. And that's not helped, but it means it's less obvious to other people, which is kind of nice because when you're out and about and I couldn't stand anything around my neck, so I'd like V-neck tops on and you can see a big red thing on someone and they're looking at it and it's like, mm, go away. Whereas now it's not really that noticeable. It's only noticeable if you know it's there which is great. And that's because it's gone back to my natural skin tone. The scar is still quite big. It's a decent sized scar, but it's going back to my natural skin tone. And that's helped. Um, going back to work has, has boosted my confidence again. Being able to go out and have coffee with friends without having to take somebody with me is boosting my confidence. So I'm doing really well. Um, Reading, writing, all that jazz is all good again. I found doing jigsaw puzzles has helped um, on my tablet for coordination. Being able to stand up and make a meal has helped my stamina in standing up. So all these little things are building towards getting me better, getting me out of that chair at some point. And it may be another year before I can go into town and not use my chair or go shopping before I, I don't use my chair. Because I still get tired. But I find I can climb the stairs and sit at my desk at work and go back to work rather than climb the stairs and then have to take three quarters of an hour's break because I'm too tired. And that's happened in the space of four months. So it's definitely an uphill struggle. It's a death struggle every day to keep that momentum of recovery. Um, medically, I'm doing really well. My meds have reduced. Um, my, I'm not in pain at all. Um, I don't feel tender. I had a lot of tenderness around my upper stomach, um, under my chest. I don't have that anymore. So physically, I've just got aching joints from where I'm. I'm 
I'm walking around physically more. But other than that, I'm great. And it's it's really good. There's been a lot of different things that I've had to relearn, which has been hard. Talking, eating, reading, writing. Not reading, but being able to focus to read, I should should say. I could still read. Um, but being able to hold a pen and write. Being able to remember remember things like unlock my phone um passcodes luckily everything's fingerprint now um but yeah just simple things like holding a knife and fork now to eat rather than just a fork because both would tire me those sorts of things are now back to normal um it's just the walking side of it which i'm and my voice which i'm working hard on i'm starting to try and sing in the car to get my voice back a bit it's not coming back that great, but hey, I still can't sing. But it's it's better than it was. So, yeah, things are good. Um, I don't know if I've missed anything, recovery-wise. I don't think so. Um, but it is going a lot better at the moment. If you've got any questions about recovery or challenges I may have had, or if you think of anything you want to know, Drop it down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Um, you don't have to, but it would help. If you think it might help somebody to know there is light at the end of the tunnel and recovery takes a while. I mean, I'm what, a year? And I'm doing, I'm nine months out, nine and a half months out of hospital nearly. And I'm doing so much better than I was. And it's frustrating and it makes you angry because you can't do simple tasks. But then one day it clicks and everything starts progressing day by day in the right direction. So if you know anyone who's going through some form of recovery, then, you know, if this video might be helpful to them, please share. Um, and until then, I will see you in my next one, which I'm hoping will be my what's in my hospital bag video. I've just got to gather the stuff together, which I don't have right now. And I'm too tired today to film another film. But I hope you've enjoyed these two. I will film again very shortly. Uh, she says that. I promise I will. I will film before I go into hospital for my surgery again. Um, but until then, look after yourselves and as always, just do you.